I would not recommend making a bow out of a Home Depot 2x4. Who would have known? We're gonna see how many shots it takes me to even hit this thing. Oh! Man, I am covered in 2x4. Hey guys, here's another Joe on location at his favorite place, Home Depot. And I decided I'm gonna make a bow out of the most nastiest 2x4 I can find. It's already curved for me. We're gonna do a lamination, and we're gonna cut this all up and glue it all back together with some fiberglass. I think we're gonna see how long it will last. It's pine, so I don't know. But, yeah. Finally found a use for these crooked two by fours. Let's get to it. Well guys, it's been a couple days here in the old shop, and I left this two by four out in the back of my truck to get even more warped. Our issue is, is we gotta cut this down because we're gonna do it like a laminate. Where we're gonna have little thin strips and we're gonna layer them up. My saw though, as you've seen in many videos, is not very strong. So, we're gonna sit here and see what we can do. But uh, it's gonna be a lot of bogging down, probably a lot of uh, muttered words under our breath, angry words, and we're just gonna get to it. I'm trying to shoot for not like an English longbow, but I'm trying to shoot for like kind of a medium sized bow. So I'm gonna shoot through and we're gonna stick around four feet. Uh, now this is gonna be reinforced with fiberglass, so it should be pretty tough. Time to make some cuts. Uh, I'm going to shoot for doing six strips, which should give me about three quarters of an inch. With our fiberglass and our glue, that should be enough for the thickness of the bow with this. Well guys, failure. Failure on a grand scam. I bought this table saw from a very nice older gentleman and uh, it is not meant to be used for resawing two by fours. I got four down, but we got a little bit left to go. So I'm actually gonna take a road trip. I'm gonna go down to my parents' place and I'm gonna cut up the rest and then we're gonna be back and we're gonna glue it all up tonight. We are back in the shop, guys, and it is getting really late. I'm very tired, but we gotta try to see if we can make a jerry-rigged bow mold. We've got all these little laminated strips, and I've got some PVC wood left over from the catio, so go check that out. Put a link down in the corner here, a little picture, a little catio. And so we're gonna make this bent into a curve. So I'm gonna cut some of this two by four up into little blocks, and we're gonna add progressively a couple blocks here and there. That will be our arch, and then we will glue and clamp every single one of these pieces uh, right to it. Now the great thing about this system is that I came up with in a sleepy stupor is I can move these blocks in or out and that's gonna determine how curved the bow is without the string. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. I'm gonna lay my fiberglass down first. I'm gonna pick through these pieces of wood, pick my best ones. A couple of them I'm actually gonna layer up in the center only so we have a thicker area for the handle. This we might actually leave pretty thick though because you know, it is pine. But that fiberglass is really gonna help it on the outside. We're gonna get gluing, guys. So first things first, like I said, we are gonna be using Tight Bond 3. And the best part about this stuff is it's in all the bow forms, you can use it, which is pretty cool. Be bad if they didn't. Stuff's pretty cheap and you can get it just about anywhere. We're gonna lay this down. We're gonna finish it off with a smaller piece at the end. Now when working the fiberglass, you do like your wet down, I believe it's called. And so we're gonna put this on, and we're gonna brush this right into the material. This is the same thing with the wood we're gonna do. I'm going to just add a handle area. and uh, yet again I am left with what looks like a modern art sculpture here on my desk. Uh, it is dripping glue everywhere. I've got towels underneath it. We are going to let this sit overnight. Tomorrow we're going to unclamp it and we're going to see how it goes. Anyways guys, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. One thing, I'm doing this. You get to pop these right off. If you don't have these from Harbor Freight, definitely grab some. 
I think they're pretty useful. Bam! Bam! Well guys, as you can see, I've got it out of the mold and it is not dry all the way. Probably should have given it a full 24 hours, but it's a little impatient, so I didn't. Uh, we're going to sit here and let this bottom layer dry for a couple more hours and then we're gonna get at working on it. Now, the reason is, is because I gotta jigsaw the basic shape of this out and I really don't want to peel all the fiberglass off. But in the meantime, I can tell you kind of a little more why we're doing this. Uh, one day, we're working at a customer's house and we're in the basement and me and my buddy Harold, uh, we're working with, and we are working on replacing some rotted joists. Now we're rotting joists, you gotta rip them out, put new ones in. I look at Harold and I say, Harold, uh, these, joists are so crooked. I go, we got at Home Depot and I said, man, looks like we could make a bow out of them. And he goes, well, why don't you? You do YouTube. I go, uh, I guess. So that's how we got here. Thank you, Harold, for the great idea. Uh, it was all his, it wasn't mine. I gotta say, what a guy, what a guy. Talks a lot though, but you know, I guess you know, I do too. So what are you gonna do? Anyways, see you when it's dry, guys. Man, I am covered in two by four. It's a little bit of a callback for you, if you want. So guys, I've got a little bit of this isopropyl alcohol and some amber shellac I've had for literally ages. It looks disgusting. Uh, and I am going to thin this down. The isopropyl alcohol, the reason behind that is to thin it down so that it'll soak into the grain better. This stuff is ready to recoat in about 30 minutes. With adding the isopropyl alcohol, it might be a little sooner, I think. I think the more alcohol you add to it, the quicker it is. So I'm going to start with doing the backhand side here, right over this fiberglass job that I t did and totally did not have my brother tell me I need to do it. It was all my idea. It wasn't Zach's. Well, guys, I just got a little bit more free time to work on this thing, and check this out. It is cured, and it is beautiful. It's not gonna win any awards for the nicest bow ever made, but you can see all the different layers in it. I think it came out really cool. And uh, the next step here for us is for me to show you guys how to make a makeshift bowstring. So the first thing I like to do in making a makeshift bowstring, and albeit guys, I haven't done this for a while. So I'm gonna start out with a nail on this end here. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure your string is a little bit shorter than your entire length of your bow. So I like to take my two nails, tie an, a loop around one. What you wanna do now, so you want to take your string here and you just loop it and there's the end uh -oh. well plan b guys i've got a thing of white string that actually has enough string on it and i'm actually going to change the recipe a bit. change the recipe here we're going to go figure eights that's going to make it a little easier for me to loop those ends up when it's time right now we've got basically a big figure eight so what we need is to take this and close these loops. We're gonna start wrapping this around. We're gonna do that until we create a loop at the end. Cut this probably about a foot long. Now that that's nice and tight, make a knot. There's one, there's two, three and four and five and six. And just make a couple knots in here so that this can't come undone. Now for the final spot is we're gonna make a little area right in the middle that we can put our arrows and notch them right on to. Well guys, once you're done, uh, just bend the nails in, and you pop it right off. It's look a little messy until it's on, and then once it's on, it'll look pretty darn good. So there is a distinct chance that this could snap just from me showing you this, guys. That is the way to do it, but I am terrified of that. I think if I string that, it is going to, I think it's gonna snap it. So guys, same as last time, slip your foot through. And an easy trick is to have your string on both sides. You slipped it over top of it. 
oh, sorry guys, wrong one, leg through here. Get us a little dyslexic with this. Now, since your loop is already on there, you just gotta flex your bow and bring it up. And then the bow is strung. And we've got that nice bead right in the center for us to put our arrows on. We've got our <laughs> makeshift extend a loop there. That's not perfect, but I'm not gonna complain. Anyways, guys, we got our Home Depot bow and uh, we're gonna go test this thing out. We're gonna see how it works. I got a watermelon that uh, needs a few holes in it. So we're gonna see what we can do. Let's go. So I've got the slow-mo camera set up down there and I've got this camera set up here to watch me. We're gonna see how many shots it takes me to even hit this thing. Pull back. Oof. Pretty close. This thing is has got a weird pull weight, but it, it flings them and it doesn't really fling them very well. Oh, I hit it, but didn't go in. Guys, speed this up until I finally hit this thing. Well guys, it happened. I fired about probably 15 to 20 arrows out of this thing. And you know, I'm, I realized why I haven't been doing bows and arrows for a while. One, I'm not a good shot. And uh, yeah, that's really kind of cringe to put this up on YouTube making a bow. The other sad thing is the end of my bow's got a kink in it. It's, hey, still works. So what this means is even with fiberglass, even with layering, even with all of this, I would not recommend making a bow out of a Home Depot 2x4. <laughs> Who would have known? I've got my arrow wench here with me. She's gonna hand me arrows. And yes, we have gotten progressively closer and closer to this melon. Catching my sights. Oh, oh hey, same hole. You didn't see that. Okay, Aaron, your turn. Now I gotta be the arrow wench. Oh, first try. I just punched myself in the face. Yeah. There you go, try another one. Bam. Comes with a little puff ball of grass on the end. It helps it fly. I can't believe I missed that close. Hey, one. Oh, two. Oh, and I missed the third one. Bullseye. Call me legless because I'm shooting two arrows at once. And neither of them hit. Charlie, go to sleep. Go to sleep. You're not gonna survive this. We're done. I'd say that is about as much testing as one little two by four bow can take. Right, this video. Oh God. It was covered in grass. It's gross. But if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more stuff like this, definitely subscribe. I guess there's something about liking it I'm supposed to say. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Final recommendation, eh, it was fun. Definitely do it if you got the time. See if you can make it work. If you do, let me know. I'd love to hear about in the comments if you got yours to work. Mine, maybe not the most bent two by four. If you found a nice one, it would probably work. But as it is, Still isn't a use for those bent Home Depot 2x4s. Catch you later, guys.